Good day. Welcome to our first lesson in Chemistry for Engineers, an introduction. Our learning objectives are understand the relationship of chemistry and engineering, classify the scientific method process and scientific models, identify the classification of matter, recognize units and measure and instruments of measurements, and finally, determine and calculate the properties of substance. Our topic outline are chemistry and engineering, an overview, branches of chemistry, scientific method, development of chemistry, matter and classification, measurement and instruments, and properties of substance. Yeah, I love to see every freshman in their first day of school. That energy, enthusiasm, optimistic, and fighting spirit they got in every first day of school. And I hope you maintain that excitement all throughout your college days. But in every story, there are antagonists. And in this story, your teachers. May the ads be ever in your favor. An engineering student be like in class, not because they love sleeping, rather it's due to sleep last night, not because of K-drama, anime, and mobile legend, but rather plenty of assignments and projects, problem compilation, drawing, AutoCAD, reviewing for quizzes and exam, and writing research paper. But that feeling when you finish your engineering degree, and I'd love to see you, you all, not only in that academic gown, but in your tarfoli congratulating, congratulating you because you passed your first take of licensure examination. Anyway, Chemistry for Engineer, an overview. And yes, you studied chemistry since high school, senior high school, and yes, even in college, you have to study chemistry. But why you need to study chemistry? What is chemistry, by the way? From waking up, eating your breakfast, commuting, going to school, and studying your lesson, chemistry is on work. As you look around, everywhere, there is chemistry. As you begin your journey in engineering, it may cross in your mind, why should you study chemistry? I want you to do this practically anyway when I became an engineer. Maybe for some, it's just a subject that that part of your degree needed to pass just to graduate. But in reality, chemistry and engineering has strong link that can be seen in various fields of an application of engineering. Most obvious example is chemical engineering, which involves design and optimization of process in the chemical industry, dealing with chemistry, concept, and daily basis. For an civil engineer, it is important to know the properties of the material used in the construction. Also, it is necessary to consider the chemical reaction of the material when exposed to the environment because the chemical reaction will greatly affect the strength and integrity of an infrastructure. Some applications of chemistry and engineering are much less obvious. At 1,483 feet, the Petronas Tower, as you can see in the right picture, in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, were the tallest building in the world when they were completed in 1998. Steel was in short supply in Malaysia. So the tower's architects decided to build the structure out of something that country had abundance of, and local engineers were familiar with concrete. But the impressive height of the tower requires exceptionally strong concrete. The engineers eventually settled on a material that has come to be known as high-strength concrete, in which the chemical reactions between silica fume and Fertland cement produce a stronger material, more resistant to compression. This example illustrates the, relevan the relevance of chemistry, even to, every to very traditional fields of engineering. In the advancement in the field of electrical engineering, most of the industry relies on solid-state devices. As an electrical engineer, you must understand the behavior of chips, of semiconductor, crystal, at atomic level. 
The fundamental principles in chemistry explain the thermochemistry, energy conversion, which essentials in the power generation. Chem mechanical engineer must knowledgeable in the chemistry of combustion and fuel use also. As technology advances, you must aware of the fundamental principles govern science, especially chemistry. You have to keep updated of the emerging industry of nanotechnology that already in the market. With this technology, engineers design and manufacture a microscopic scale. We'll also familiarize with the new technology and energy generation as we are facing the depletion of piece of fuel and other natural resources. We may discuss electrochemistry and nuclear chemistry. You will also be aware of the pollution the world facing and as a future engineer, your expertise will be needed by the world to answer this crisis. So what is chemistry? It is defined as a study of matter and the changes material substances undergo. It has been called the central science because it is important to so many other fields of scientific study. Chemistry can be either pure or applied. Pure chemistry goal is to gather knowledge for the sake of knowledge. It does not necessarily have an application. For example, studying or forming vaccine for COVID-19 in a lab in a small scale. It is pure because the goal is to study the vaccine being formulated, while applied chemistry is using chemistry to attain certain goals, and it has a practical application in society. For example, producing a vaccine for the COVID-19, it is applied because the goal now is to apply the newly formulated vaccine to a certain community. There are two levels of understanding or perspective in chemistry. First, macroscopic in which we observe chemical reactions in the laboratory or in the world around us. The second one, microscopic, which observe in chemical reaction in atomic level.